Good morning. Praise the Lord, Good morning. everyone. Good morning. Praise Him. Praise Him. This is the day Glory. the Lord has made. Hallelujah. Us rejoice yes. And be glad in it. Hallelujah. We thank the Lord for another day. Yes. We thank the Lord for brand new mercy. Yes. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Psalms 100 says, make a joyful noise unto the yeah. Lord. That's what we're about to do, Hallelujah. all ye land. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that has made us, not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with what? Thanksgiving. 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 And into his courts with? Praise. Be thankful unto him and? For the Lord is? Good. His mercy is everlasting. And his truth endures to all generations. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's worship him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We give you glory today for who you are, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Bless your name. Let's set this atmosphere for a mighty move of God today. Hallelujah. Here we go. Worship the Lord. Worship the Lord. Let's praise His holy name. Worship the Lord. Let's magnify His name. Worship the Lord. Let's praise His holy name. Worship the Lord. Let's magnify His name. Oh, 
in our minds, we bow. Bow down. We submit to your will. We bow down. Bow down. We bow We bow down, we bow down, consuming fire, consuming fire, consuming. Lord of Lords, we bow. bow down. It's a 
sign of surrender. It is a sign of respect. Hallelujah, hallelujah, reverence. You can bow down in your mind and in your heart. Submit yourself. Bow down. Submit yourself. Humble yourself before him. Bow down. We bow. Bow down. <laughs> bow down. Consuming fire. One more time. Consuming fire. adjusted protocol we will have for our welcome song all right we've checked with our uh, public health nurse we're so thankful that we have a public health nurse that attends our assembly and uh, we were asking uh, because of what's going on with this corona we we sought professional public health uh, guidance amen amen so what she told me is what they do on her job. Now they're at public health. They do the elbow bumps. And they do the ear kisses. Air kisses, you know, where you, you know, the ear kisses, but they don't embrace. So I just thought it was wise, amen, uh, to let us know that we're not going to do away with the welcome song, but we can air bump. I mean, we can, uh, I call it chicken wing Sunday myself. We can uh, elbow bump or fist bump or just, you know. All right. But uh, I wanted you to understand we have to make an adjustment in our protocol until this thing passes. Amen? Amen. All right. So now we can do the welcome song. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs>
chickens go. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> All right. Just as a reminder, just continue your, your regular personal hygiene habits. That's all. Wash your hands. And use hand sanitizer if you can find it. <laughs> Amen. If you can find it. Amen. We have to take certain precautionary measures because we're dealing with people. Amen? Amen. Amen. But our faith, our confidence, and our hope is in the Lord ultimately. Amen? But we need to be wise. All right? All right. If you're, if you're worshiping with us for the very first time uh, here, this is your first time here, and you did not receive a welcome packet, if you raise your hand, our sanctuary support team will ensure that you receive a welcome packet. All right, if you're in the sanctuary, whomever you are, and you would like to receive a bulletin, you raise your hands and we will ensure that you receive a bulletin. All right, I have a few announcements we want to bring to your attention. Today, after dismissal, there's treats and eats in Jehovah Java. Also, we have a, the men the man cave is in the multi-purpose room, and we're dealing with today small business basics. It will be facilitated by Brother John Hall and Brother Michael Gooden. So we're asking the brothers to consider supporting treats and eats so you can have your treats and eats refreshment during the meeting, all right? Uh, the Central California District Council Spring Conference is this Thursday through Saturday in Bakersfield, California. So in consideration, there is no noonday Bible study or midweek worship. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Some of y'all trying to convince me. So we, wh what we would like for you to do is consider giving your midweek offering today. Now that shouldn't be an all. That should be a yay. All right. So uh, for our choir and our sacred, sacred arts rehearsal, you still rehearse on your, on your same uh, time. All right. So, okay. Um, my wife and I will be traveling to Bakersfield, driving down to Bakersfield uh, for the conference, so we solicit your prayers, amen? amen, and for all those who will be going to the conference in Bakersfield. All right, if we live in the Lord will, next Sunday is our annual church business meeting. Our annual church business meeting will take place after, shortly after our morning worship service. This meeting is open to all documented members of this assembly, all right? If you're a documented member, then you're welcome to come, all right? The funeral service for Bernard Young, who is Harry Manchester's son, Brother Elder Manchester's son, is this coming Saturday, March the 15th at 10 a.m. at Mount Sinai Church, 
The address is 3669 West 54th Street in Los Angeles. Now there is viewing from on Friday, March the 13th from 3 p.m. to 8 p.m. at Inglewood Cemetery. All right, I want you to continue to pray for the Manchester family, pray for Sister Janice Williams and her family, amen, and the loss of her brother. Pray for Elder Wainwright and, and her family, the loss of, their bro of her brother, amen. Pray for all those who have lost loved ones, amen, amen, and pray for one another. Scripture says that the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much. Amen. At this time, we're going to continue in our worship and worship the Lord in our giving. <laughs> For the week ending Sunday, March the 1st, we achieved 100% of our <laughs> weekly goal. We praise God for that. Amen. Amen. We are, when we give unto the Lord, we give because we love the Lord. We don't give because someone makes us give. We give because we love the Lord, and we just want to be a part of what God is doing in his kingdom. Amen. Uh, we, we know that it takes finances to do the things that we do here to serve the congregation as well as the community. Amen? Amen. And we know that we're, we don't give to get blessed, but we're blessed because we're just obedient to the Lord and we worship him in our giving. So if you uh, are giving this morning of your tithing and your offering, if you're giving this morning uh, by check, please make your check payable to Home Assembly Church. Home Assembly Church. Uh, if you're giving electronically, if you exit to the lobby and go to the Welcome Center, Welcome Cove, someone will be there to receive your gifts electronically. And just let me encourage our young people. Uh, it's good to learn to start tithing now. Amen. It's good to learn that if you have a job, if you, if you, if you receive money for birthdays or whatever, graduation, it's good to start to get in the practice of giving God uh, off the top because we have a cloud of witnesses here that can tell you that you can't beat God giving and if you get, in, if you get into a habit at early age of just giving to the Lord, you'll be surprised uh, the blessings that you will receive. Amen? Alright, so as is our custom, we ask those who are willing and able, if you would mind standing with us and hold your gift that you're going to give to the Lord in one hand and on the back of our church bulletin we have our church unity prayer and I'm happy that you all are here this morning that you did spring forward amen amen so when that happens I, I tend to go to bed early on a spring forward because I need that hour I don't know about you but I need that hour so I I tend to go to bed early. Amen? All right, let's read. For this cause we bow our knees unto you, our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that you would grant us according to the riches of your glory, that our church be strengthened with might by your spirit in our inner man, that you, Christ, would dwell in our hearts by faith, that we, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height, and that we would know the love of Christ, which passeth knowledge, that we might be filled with all the goodness of God. Now unto you who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us, unto you be glory in this church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. For this cause also we do not cease to pray for our church, and desire that we might be filled with the knowledge of your will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that we might walk worthy of you, Lord, unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of you, 
strengthen with all might according to your glorious power unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness giving thanks unto you father which have made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light who have delivered us from the power of darkness and have translated us into your kingdom jesus for it is in you we have redemption through your blood even the forgiveness of sins furthermore because the promises of God are true and our latter will be greater than our past. In unity, we declare that our church property will be 100% completed in God's perfect time and will be within budget according to his perfect will. In unity, we declare that our church will be a beacon in the community to draw souls to Christ and that our hearts will be ready and open to welcome all, allowing God to get all glory for it is he that hath made it so. In Jesus' name, amen. Be so kind as to follow the directions of our sanctuary support team from the rear. Thank you. one. sing this together. All hail the power of Jesus' name. Two. Hey. 
chosen seed of Israel's race, ye ransomed from the fall. Hail him who saves you by his grace and crown.
Jesus. We praise you. We praise your name. We praise your name. Jehovah. We praise you. I wonder. If anybody has a problem this morning, or concern, or a situation, anybody dealing with anything that hasn't yet been resolved, yes. or you haven't yet yeah, had an glory, answer, glory, glory. if I can suggest that at this moment you give God a praise, yes, ha. Hallelujah, like hallelujah, you really believe hallelujah. he's going to take care of it. Now, if you don't believe he's going to take care of it, don't do nothing. But if you believe that God is going to work the situation out, then you owe him a praise. You owe him a praise in advance. God, I'll praise you. I don't know how it's going to work out, but I know you're going to work it out. And since I know and I'm persuaded that, that you're going to work it out. I'm not going to wait until I get through. But I'm going to praise you in the midst of it right here, right now. Right now. Hey. God, I bless you. God, I praise you. God, I love you. God, you're excellent. God, you're wonderful. You're majestic, God. You're excellent. I will. Bless the Lord at all times. And his praise will continually we be in my praise. mouth. We give you praise. I don't know how you're going to work it out. I'm not concerned with how, but I know you will. Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. The Bible says God dwells in the midst of praise. God can come and sit down here among us. And while we're praising him, he's working on our behalf. We praise your name. All that men would praise the Lord for his goodness. We praise you, Lord. He deserves that. God deserves that. God, I praise you. There's none like you, God. Ain't nobody like our God. None can compare to our God. He alone is worthy of our praise. Is he worthy of your praise? Is he really worthy of your praise? Hallelujah. I praise you, God. I refuse to let a rock cry out in my place. While I have my being, I'm going to praise God. In sickness and in health, the rich or poor, I'm going to praise God. When it looks like things are going okay and when it looks like they're not going okay, I'm going to praise God. I'm going to praise Him when I feel like it. I'm going to praise Him when I don't feel like it. Because it's past a feeling. It's about knowing who God is. Because I know he can't lie. Huh? God can't lie. God doesn't change. So I'll praise him. I'll praise him in the face of that rascal devil. I'll praise him. Yes, I will. Yes, I will. I refuse to be quiet. And the more trouble comes, the more I praise. The more challenges come, the more I praise. Because God, you're worthy. God didn't do nothing to us, but he does everything for us. So why hold back? God, I bless you. I glorify your name.
all of those Jehovistic titles spoke to the attributes of God. How God did things for his people. And the same God of all those Jehovistic titles is our God today. If he was a healer then, he's a healer now. If he was a banner then, he's a banner now. He's the captain of our salvation. He is our strong tower. So be encouraged, people of God. Don't let anything steal your praise. Don't let a situation, don't let current events, don't let challenges or difficulties steal your praise. Yeah, they may look at us like we're crazy. Then we'll just give God a crazy praise. The Bible says that praise is comely for the upright. Amen. So we don't panic. We don't push the panic button. We don't throw in the towel. We just throw up our hands and give God praise. How excellent is your name in all the earth. Glory. And if there ever was a time that the real praises would invade the atmosphere that God has strategically positioned each and every one of us, it's time for the real praises to be just that, praisers. Glory. 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 Mm. Hallelujah. We have nothing to accuse God of. God's been good to us. God has been better to us than we have been to him. God has been kind to us. God has been merciful to us. Glory, glory, glory. Glory, glory, glory. It's, our praise goes past emotion. Our praise leaves emotion in the rear view mirror and our praise is according to knowledge that we know God. We know who he is. Glory. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I encourage us to live, a life, to live a life of praise to our God. Everything that we do, how we operate in our day-to-day -day interactions should bring forth praise unto God. Thank you, Jesus. God's here for us. He wants to help. Let him help. Let him do what only God can do. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, we bless you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let God do what he wants. This is not our time. This is God's time. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Have your way, God. Thank you, Lord. Jesus.
Thank you, Jesus. Move by your spirit, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Believe it or not, whatever you need from God, you can receive it at this moment. It's according to your faith. It's according to what you believe God for. Amen. Amen. Walk with me, if you will, to Matthew, the seventh chapter of the book of Matthew, the gospel according to Matthew. Did we push record? Amen. <laughs> Amen. Thank the Lord. Matthew, the seventh chapter, beginning at verse number 21. I have the amplified version, and this is what it says. Jesus is speaking, just want to let you know. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father, who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name and driven out demons in your name and done many mighty works in your name? And then, I will say to them openly, publicly, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who act wickedly, disregarding my commands. So everyone who hears these words of mine and acts upon them, obeying them, will be like a sensible prudent, practical, wise man who built his house upon the rock. And the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat against that house. Yet it did not fall because it had been founded on the rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them will be like a stupid, foolish man who built his house upon the sand. And the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat against that house and it fell. And great and complete was the fall of it. I want to talk today from a thought. Christians professing versus possessing. Christians professing versus possessing. We are living in a country where not too long ago, although the trend is changing now, this was known as a Christian nation. But I think one of the research groups, Pew or Barner, uh, they, they do surveys and research, but it seems like it's changing because there are some people, I think one of the reports that I've read, that as the younger generation, I don't know what category they are. I don't keep up with the X, Y, G, or whatever their generation is, whatever title. But basically, a lot of the number survey said that they don't even attend a church. And... Uh, they, there's a, there's a trend 
to uh, people not even to acknowledge God. People who want to give credit to the universe. And, you know, uh, other foolishness. I'll just say that, throw it in that category. They, they would rather give credit to the universe than to the creator of the universe. And, uh, but there is still, there is still a vast number, I'll just say in our country, that profess to be Christians. They profess to be Christians. But there's something missing between a professing Christian versus a possessing Christian. Here, even Jesus acknowledges that not everyone that says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. So Jesus was letting the people know in his ministry that some of y'all think y'all going, but y'all ain't going. Mm -hmm. Because some of you profess, but you don't possess. He said, many are going to say, Lord, we prophesied, we preached, we held great meetings in your name, and we've even driven out demons in your name. Our ministry was powerful. We had a powerful ministry. Hmm? We've done many mighty works in your name. So you mean to tell me that don't count for nothing? Jesus says, and then I, I will say to them openly and publicly, I'm going to let everybody know that I never knew you. Hmm? And then you're going to have to leave my presence. Depart from me, ye who act wickedly. So you mean to tell me while I was preaching? While I was driving out demons? And while I was doing many mighty works, using your name, I was name dropping on Jesus. Hmm? You mean that, that all the stuff that I did all the people that were blessed, that don't count for nothing. Something to think about. Hmm? Because they were not, if you will, real Christians. Because they didn't have Christ. They just used his name. There's a difference. Y'all thinking, I know you're thinking. And I hope you're praying. There's a difference between a professing Christian and a possessing Christian. There has been many things done under the banner of Christianity that has nothing to do with God at all. And that's a sad situation because there are true Christians who sometimes suf suffer because of the fake ones. Hmm? The fake ones. Jesus said, everyone who hears these words of mine and acts upon them and obeys them. See, see a true Christian will obey the commands of Christ. Hmm? See, sometimes we in our humanness, we want to be associated with power and influence. Huh? We want to be associated with power and influence. We, we want to be able to call a name out that will maybe open some doors for us or smooth some things over for us or get us into a place that we couldn't really get to on our own. And we as humans, we like a certain amount of recognition. We like to be noticed for being 
oh, you're one of them, you're one of them. So we would go out and buy a nice suit, spend money to get a nice cross, a big cross, and, you know, and we wear it, you know, and, and, you know, we'll walk a certain way. You know, we got to walk down pat, and, and, and we hold the Bible uh, with some sort of reverence. We hold it and we walk. Hmm? But what's going on on the inside, huh, ain't got nothing to do with God. But we, 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 I'm talking about humans, not, not we in here. We profess because we like to be associated and affiliated with a certain level of religious identification, if you will. We want to be recognized as a Christian. But Jesus said, for those people who were merely professing, I'm going to say to you, I never knew you. So he says in verse 24, everyone who hears these words of mine and acts upon them, obey them. See, in order for you to be a possessing Christian, you have to obey the commands of Jesus. It's not about your religious, it's not about anybody's religious affiliation. If you remember reading in the Gospel of John where there was a religious man. In fact, he had a position, a, a leader of the Pharisees. Y'all know him. His name was Nicodemus. And uh, he heard something about Jesus, and he heard about the teaching of Jesus, and he came to Jesus at night. You remember the account in the third chapter of the book of John? So he said, we, Rabbi, so he gave him the greeting, Rabbi, we know that you're a teacher sent from God. So he was, if you will, giving Jesus his props. Because nobody can do the things that you do except God be with him. Now, he didn't recognize that he was talking to the invisible God manifested in the flesh. He, he said, we know that you come from God, but he didn't realize he was talking to the incarnate God. He didn't realize that. And so Jesus was not carried away with the flattery and accolades and recognition. Jesus straight told him, I say unto you, except a man is born again, he can't see the kingdom of heaven. And Nicodemus asked, the human side. How can a man be born? And Jesus told him, you got to be born of the water and of the spirit. That's a command. That's a command. And that command has been handed down to possessing Christians, not professing Christians. Because possessing Christians, those who have receive Christ, receive his word, and obey his word. When it was declared to us that we had to repent, we had to get baptized in water in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of our sins, we found that this is biblically accurate and biblically correct. But there are a lot of professing Christians that back up on this point. But when we go to the historical book of the New Testament, which is the book of Acts, we'll see nine times where people got baptized and they all got baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. But the professing Christians will want to take us back to Matthew, the 28th chapter. And they, they want us to look at what Jesus said because they want to say, well, that's what Peter said, but I want to find out what Jesus said. This is what the professing Christians would do. Y'all mind if I teach today? All right. 
Because I want to make this clear so you can identify whether you are a professing Christian or a possessing Christian. And I want you to take this message out to your professing Christian friends. But pray before you take it so God will open up a door of utterance and give them an ear to hear. So the professing Christians will take you to Matthew 28 and 19 when Jesus was resurrected and the 11 were there and they heard Jesus say, all power in heaven and earth is given unto me. Right? Go ye therefore. Hmm? Teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you even until the end of the world. Amen. So this is what the professing Christians will take us to. So we who are the possessing Christians must take them to the 17th chapter of John where Jesus is praying. And Jesus says in the 17th chapter of John, I have declared unto them thy name. We have to take them to the scripture where Jesus says, I come in my Father's name. So if I come in my Father's name and my name is Jesus, then what's my Father's name if I come in my Father's name? So Father... Son and Holy Ghost are not names. This is what the professing Christians get hung up on. But the name is Jesus. The name is Jesus. Neither is there salvation in any other. Huh? For there is no other name given hmm? under heaven among men whereby we must be saved except the name of Jesus. But to professing Christians, they reject that. You mean to tell me that all this work I done done, all this money I done gave to the church, all the ministries, auxiliaries, helps, whatever you mean to tell, you're going to stand there and tell me that I'm not saved? Let's look at the Bible. Every time in the New Testament church where people got baptized, they got baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. What are we going to do with that? Hmm? Accept it? Believe it and continue the practice. This may not be popular, but it's right. Hmm? Jesus speaks again in Matthew, the 12th chapter, verse number 46. See, everybody wants to be identified with Jesus, but everybody don't want to obey him. They want to use Jesus as a, in case of emergency, break this glass type of, type of thing. Mm -mm. No, that's just a professing Christian. In Matthew 12th chapter, verse number 46, Jesus was still speaking to the people when, behold, his mother and brothers stood outside seeking to speak to him. Talk about his natural Hmm? Family. S 47. Someone said to him, listen, your mother and your brothers are standing outside seeking to speak to you. Look what Jesus said in verse 48. But he replied to the man who told him, who is my mother and who are my brothers? And stretching out his hand toward not only the 12 disciples, but all his adherents, all the ones who listened to him, all the ones who believed him, all the ones who obeyed him. Those were his adherents. He said, here are my mother and my brothers. 
For whoever does the will of my Father in heaven is my brother and sister and mother. So it's not about your natural family. And sometimes we have an issue with our natural family. Because some of our natural families are professing Christians. I know that's right. Hmm? But they're not possessing Christians. So Jesus tells the people, these are really my mother, my sister, and my brothers. Why? Because they do the will of God. Hmm? And we have to understand again that God's not willing that any should perish. So the will of God is that we repent. That was the message that John preached. That was the message that Jesus preached. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So the will of God is that we receive biblical salvation. The will of God is for every professing Christian to become a possessing Christian. You got to be baptized in Jesus' name. And you got to receive the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. Now there's a problem. The problem is that the professing and the possessing look very, very similar. Herein lies the problem. They look similar. They have similar mannerisms, if you will. Let's go to the 13th chapter of Matthew. Are you identifying yourself in one of those categories? Hopefully, it's the possessing and not just the professing. Hmm? Matthew, the 13th chapter, verse number 24. Another parable he set forth to them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while he was sleeping, his enemy came and sowed also darnel. Darnel means weeds resembling wheat. He sowed them among the wheat and went on his way. So when the plant sprouted and formed grain, the darnel weeds appeared also. And the servant of the owner came to him and said, Sir, did you not sow good seed in your field? Then how does it have darnel shoots? In it, he replied to them, an enemy has done this. The servant said to him, then do you want us to go and weed them out? But he said, no, lest in gathering the wild weeds, the weeds resembling wheat, you root up the true wheat along with it. Let them grow together until the harvest. And at harvest time, I will say to the reapers, gather the darnel first and bind it in bundles to be burned. But gather the wheat into my granary. Weed in the tares, basically. There's some tares that look like wheat. There are tares in every congregation. There are tares in this congregation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Look like wheat. Sound like wheat. Clap like wheat. Sing like wheat. But they're wow. They're weeds resembling wheat. And Jesus knows the difference. So it's not our job or responsibility to pluck them up. It's our job and responsibility to preach and to teach to everybody, right? So that the darnell might have an opportunity to be changed into real wheat. Hmm? The one who has done this and sowed the weeds is the devil, the enemy. He's our arch enemy. He has come into the quote-unquote church world 
and sowed discord. Since the word of God is right, since there is one Lord, one faith, one baptism, how in the world did our enemy come into the quote-unquote church world and sow discord, disagreement, and mistrust, and now we have all these denominations? An enemy has done this. An enemy has done this. How can you take one Bible, the same Bible that we use, but then you got all these other denominations using the same Bible? That has to be a trick of the enemy. And then what he does, he, he, he uses human pride to make us think, well, you mean, wait a minute, my mama was this and grandmama then was this. Look at what the word of God said. We have to stay. We don't want, or no one should want to, uh, no professing Christian would want to hear Jesus say, I never knew you, especially after they did a lot of work. Now, Jesus didn't say you didn't do the work. huh? Jesus didn't say, oh, no, wasn't nobody help. Jesus didn't say, oh, you didn't drive no demons out. Jesus did, because it actually wasn't them, it was the Lord that did it. See, a lot of times, it's an individual's faith in Jesus. God just uses some of us just as vessels, but it's according to the faith of the individual that's coming to God. Because the scripture says that God is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him, right? And if that person is diligently seeking God, they can get relief from God. They can get a prayer answered by God. But the most important thing is that they possess God. Because God does let it rain on the just and the unjust, right? But the main thing is to possess God. And the only way in this day and age that an individual can possess God, you got to have the Holy Ghost. If you don't have the Holy Ghost, then you are a professing Christian and not a possessing Christian. That narrows it down. That may put me on your enemies list, but it's the word of God. And it's time out for appeasing people because we don't have much time. Hmm? I tell you the truth because I love you. I tell you the truth because I want to see you in the kingdom of God. I want to see you filled with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. And when you get the Holy Ghost, you will speak in other tongues as the Spirit of God gives utterance. Walk with me for a moment. I know I'm jumping around from the notes that I sent in, but walk with me to Romans chapter number 8. I hope you're taking notes because this will help you when you get into those conversations, not arguments, but when you get into the conversations that pop up from time to time from people who may not believe like we believe. And pray that God will open up their understanding. Pray that God will give them an ear. Pray that God will allow us to speak the truth with grace and love and they'll be able to be a possessor of Jesus Christ. Romans chapter number 8, verse number 9, Paul is talking to the saints in Rome. He says, but well, you are not living the life of the flesh. You are living the life of the Spirit if the Holy Spirit of God really dwells within you, directs and controls you. Big word there, if. You see that? Because, the verse continues, but if anyone, Lord have mercy. If anyone, is that in your Bible? Does not possess the Holy Spirit of Christ. He is none of his. He does not belong to Christ. Is not truly a child of God. What we going to do with that? 
I know you have good intentions. I know you have good goals. I know you have a certain level of morals. But if you don't have the Spirit of Christ, if anyone does not possess the Holy Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. He does not belong to Christ, is not truly a child of God. You're just professing something that you don't possess yet. And God wants you to move from professing to confessing that I'm not what I'm professing, and then he wants you to possess what the rest of us have already possessed, which is the Holy Ghost. If you don't have Holy Ghost and Holy Spirit, it's one and the same. It's God. If you don't have the Spirit of Christ, then you do not belong to Christ. Profess all you want. Hmm? Do all the works you want. Huh? Feed as many people as you can feed. Give as much money. Go visit them in the jail. Go visit them in the hospital. But you need the Holy Ghost. You need the Holy Ghost. It is essential. It is imperative for you to be born like Jesus told Nicodemus. It has not changed. You need the Holy Ghost. We got people in our natural families that haven't been filled with the Holy Ghost yet. I got a brother right now, downtown, struggling. He needs the Holy Ghost. He needs the Holy Ghost. Walk with me to 2 Timothy, chapter number 3. Chapter number 3. Beginning at verse number one, Paul is talking to Timothy. He says, but understand this. Timothy, you need to understand something. That in the last days will come, will set in perilous times of great stress and trouble, hard to deal with and hard to bear. We're, we're here, y'all. Huh? We're here. There are churches filled at this moment with professing <laughs> folk. Huh? Filled. And in the room only with professing. Hmm? For people, verse 2, for people will be lovers of self and utterly self-centered. But I'm a Christian, though. Hmm? Lovers of money and aroused by an inordinate greedy desire for wealth. They even claim it. Blab it and grab it. Get all you can and can all you get. Hmm? Proud and arrogant and contemptuous boasters. Oh, the Lord did this. Okay, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. okay. If, if you ain't getting these financial blessings, then you, you may be, yeah, what? Where did you get that from? Hmm? They will be abusive. Blasphemous, scoffing, disobedient to parents. Can any parents in here say amen? All right. Ungrateful, unholy, and profane. They will be without natural human affection. Hmm? Callous and inhumane. Relentless. Admitting of no truce or appeasement. They will be slanderers, false accusers, troublemakers. Anybody know any troublemakers? Lord have mercy. Intemperate and loose in morals and conduct. We know that's happening now. It's been happening for a long time. Uncontrolled. You see that? And fierce. Haters of good. Hmm. They will be treacherous. Betrayers. Rash and inflated with self-conceit. Oh, I'm good. No, you ain't. Ain't no, nothing good. There's no good thing in the flesh. They will be lovers of sensual pleasures and vain amusements more than and rather than lovers of God. We're living in that day. Now watch this. Verse 5, for although they hold a form of piety, true religion, they deny and reject and are strangers to the power of it. Their conduct belies the genuineness of their profession. So what they do 
tells them and tells everybody around them, we just professing Christians. We ain't possessing Christians. We just going to play the game so we can get over down here and get what we can down here. You know, we'll wave our hand every now and then, you know, but, uh, you know, we ain't with that. You know, we just, we just attend whatever church, you know, but uh, I ain't doing that. You know, uh, well, uh, no, nah, I, you know, and then, and then they'll get people to themselves and say, look, you know, I heard what the pastor said, but you ain't got to do all that. Uh, you, uh, what, do, what does he think? I mean, here it is, 2020. He, does he expect people to still live like that? Huh? You mean to tell, wait a minute, how long you been at that church? You're only human. You're only human. What? What, does, what, does, what do they expect? Right. It's not what they expect. It's what God has already declared. Right. God said, be ye holy, for I am holy. God said, follow peace with all men and sanctification, which is holiness, which out, without which no man shall see the Lord. So if we are expecting to see the Lord, we cannot be merely professing Christians. He said, for although they hold a form of piety and true religion, they're good actors. They just hold it. They just play it apart. They deny and reject and are strangers, hmm? strangers to the power of it. Their conduct belies, or their conduct tells on them, belies the genuineness of their possession. This is what Paul told Timothy. Avoid all such people. Turn away from them. Hmm? So away with the fake, the ponies, and the frauds. I ain't got time for no fake Christians. Lord, have mercy. Uh, we, we don't have time for fake folk. We don't have time for hypocrites. Time is too short to, to play games with people who really don't want to change. You don't want to change. What you, why do you keep coming? You, are you coming here to spy out our liberties? Huh? You coming here because you can get a connection? Huh? You need to be coming to meet Jesus. Huh? You need, you, time out for the professing folks. Mm -mm -mm -mm. You need to be a possessing. Oh, John 14. This is a, this is a teaching moment. It ain't for a whole lot of hollering. This is for sober thinking and reflection and adjustments if necessary, and they are necessary. Let me put that out there. Hmm? John 14, Jesus again in verse number 15 of John 14. If you really love me, you will keep, obey my commands. Oh, how I love Jesus. Really? And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another comforter, counselor, helper, intercessor, advocate, strengthener, and stand by, that he may remain with you forever. So he's talking about the Holy Ghost. So if you really love me, hmm, Jesus is saying, if you really love me, you keep, you obey my command. And remember that first command that he gave. To Nicodemus, you got to be born again of water and of the Spirit. So if you really love Jesus, you, ain't, you will not argue about your need for, to be born of the Spirit, if you really love him. Now, if you like him, you're going to argue. Well, he, he, you know, well, I, he, let me move on. If you like him, because sometimes we play that game in our human relationships. All right. I might as well chase this rabbit for a minute. Uh, sometimes, uh, well, he's my friend. We're not together, but he's my friend. She's just my, you know, my friend. You know, you know, you know, uh, uh, we're just kicking it. Okay. All right, you keep kicking it. You're going to get kicked out. If you really love me, Jesus said, you will obey my commands. Then he talks in verse 17, the spirit of truth. This is what he says the Father will send you. 
the spirit of truth. Now, Jesus is truth. He is the spirit. Watch this. Whom the world cannot receive, welcome, take to its heart, because it does not see him or know and recognize him, but you know and recognize him, for he lives with you constantly and will be in you. Jesus is actually telling them, I'm the spirit of truth that you're going to receive. He said, you see him. The world can't see him, but you see him because I'm right here with you now. Hmm? Verse number 18, he says, I will not leave you as orphans, comfortless, desolate, bereaved, forlorn, helpless. I will come back to you. That's a promise from Jesus himself. And he came back on the day of Pentecost when they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit of God gave an utterance. This was Jesus fulfilling what he said here in John, the 14th chapter. And he came back to us individually on the day that we were filled with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. And on that day that we were filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost, when God spoke out of us, when we spoke in other tongues, as the Spirit of God gave utterance, just like they did in the Bible when we got what they got when we got what God gave when we got what God promised then we were moved into the kingdom of God and we became possessing Christians because now we have this treasure we have this power we have this very God we have this spirit of truth we have this Jesus we have this everlasting life on the end side of us and we are now the sons of God because he's given us his spirit whereby we cry Abba Father, God is our Father because we've been born again. We've been born from above. God has sent back according to his word. He sent the precious gift of the Holy Ghost and it flooded our souls and we cried out. We prophesied in tongues. We spoke in tongues as the Spirit of God gave the utterance and we are the ones that has the same spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead so our confidence is that that same spirit since it dwells in us I thank God you ought to thank God for the day that he filled you with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost you ought to thank God and praise God for the day that you spoke in other tongues as the spirit of God gave utterance because this was to let you and everybody around you know God's in here now. Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which you have received from God and you're not your own. I thank God that, that my body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. I thank God that though this outward man may perish, my inward man is being renewed day by day. I thank God that if God sends me by the way of the grave, I'm getting up because I'm going in with Jesus in. Hallelujah. I thank God that if I'm walking around and living when Jesus cracks the sky, I'm going to be changed. We're going to be changed in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye. We shall not all sleep, but we all going to be changed. Oh, I'm praising God because I'm a possessing Christian. You have to understand that it's in the 11th chapter of the book of Acts around 25 or 26. That's when the disciples were first called Christians at Antioch. But back then, it wasn't a popular thing to be called a Christian. Back then, it was like a put down. But listen, I'll get down with the put down because one day we're going up. Glory, hallelujah, put me down all you want. Let uh, talk about us uh, all you want. But one day uh, the world uh, is going to realize uh, that God is right uh, and our God uh, is right uh, and we will write uh, 
And we were right to believe the report. We were right to hear the gospel. We were right to obey the gospel. We were right to receive this great salvation. Oh, I hear the Bible says to all the professing ones, how shall you escape if you neglect so great a salvation? Yes, there's some professing folks in this house right now at this moment. But I want to encourage you. I want to beseech you by the mercies of God to be reconciled. God wants to change your identity. Yes, you might have some good moral things in your mind. Yes, you might obey here all the human laws. Yes, you might be an upstanding citizen, but God wants you to be a citizen of heaven. And the only way you got to be a citizen of heaven, you got to have what God sent down from heaven. He sent down the Holy Ghost. He sent down the Holy Ghost. And we're crying this morning, send it down, God. Send it down. Because there's some professors that need to be possessors in the name of Jesus. How long are you going to come here and sit here in your condition? You don't have, I got to borrow something from Bishop Vinton. You ain't got a warehouse of breath. You don't know when your last day you have the audacity to come in here week after week, year after year, and still don't change. Don't abuse the mercy of God. Don't think lightly about the mercy of God. Oh, I hear God say in the day that you hear his voice, don't you harden your heart. God's word is above human tradition. God's word is above every denomination. God's word will stand. Heaven and earth will pass away, but God's word will abide forever. And his word has already declared, if you don't have the spirit of God, you don't belong to him. I thank God for his grace. I thank God for his mercy. Well, one day grace is going to be up. I hear the Bible say, save yourself from this untoward generation. God's been kind. You know God's been kind to you. You know God's been good to you. You know God's been patient with you. What in the world are you waiting on? You need the Holy Ghost. God's trying to save your soul. You need the Holy Ghost. You need the Holy Ghost. I go to church every Sunday. Are you in the church? It ain't about a building. I go to church more than someone so. But are you in the church triumphant? Are you in the Savior's bride? Or won't you come and be baptized into the body and forever more abide? Yes, there shall be light in the evening time. The path to glory. God's been showing you the path to glory, but you've been sitting there with your arms folded and your legs crossed. I ain't moving. I'm all right like I am. No, you're not. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. I'm all right. I don't believe that. I don't believe that. All liars and unbelievers will have their part in the lake. You don't want to go there. I don't believe that. I don't believe that. That was for back then. That was for back then. That was for back then. No, same God. Same God. Same God. Who authorized another way to come into the kingdom? Nobody. You can't get in because mama was in. 
You can't get in because daddy's in. You can't get in because big mama, you know, big mama brought us to church when we were little kids. She sat us down on the first row. You know, and I know big mama prayed for you. Big mama gone. She got to deal with Jesus just like you. You and big mama going to have to talk to, you're going to have to talk to big Jesus. Come on, Christians, professing or confessing, somebody needs to get the Holy Ghost. And don't give up till you get it. And get it like the Bible says. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost. All of them. And began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit of God gave them utterance. All of them. You mean that still happens today? Yes, it does. God ain't changed. And in this dispensation, the only way for you to obtain biblical salvation, you got to be born again of water and of the Spirit. More than a feeling. Because your feelings sometimes are deceptive. You can be in a church service and, ooh, it's, I just felt, I just, yeah, okay, you feel, you feel, okay, good. But it's not about your feeling. It's about your being filled, a feeling. So substitute the feel, F-E, and get F-I-L-L-E-D. God wants you filled with his spirit. God wants people filled with his spirit, filled to the brim. Mm, God will fill you where he will pour out of you. Huh? And God will let you and the whole section where you are know, oh, this is God. In heaven, you want to set something off in heaven. Heaven will rejoice over one sinner, one sinner who repents. And, and let your pride down. Set your pride. Set your pride. Look, I'm going to set you down for right now. I got to go get this. I got to get what they got. Yeah, I know I've been professing for years. I know that. You know, and it's done me pretty good so far. But I need this. I need this. With everything that's going on in the world, we see the sign of the times, signs of the times. I would want to be in jeopardy. I would want to base on a hope in a maybe. I would want to base my, e my eternal existence, looking back to yesterday, <laughs> on a hope and a wish. I want to be persuaded. I want to know that I got God on the inside. Huh? I want to know it. And the only way I can know it, I got to have this biblical experience of being filled with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost, speaking in other tongues as the Spirit of God give utterance, being baptized in water in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of my sins. When I get that, when you get that, you got biblical salvation. You got something that the world can't give you and the world can't take it away. So, Christian, Professing or confessing? Which category are you in? God bless you. God keep you. We're the Apostolic Faith Home Assembly Church. We're located in Los Angeles, California. We hope that something was shared in this broadcast that will be a blessing and a benefit to you. If you haven't repented of your sins, if you haven't been baptized in Jesus' name, for the remission of your sins. If you haven't received the precious gift of the Holy Ghost, speaking in other tongues as the Spirit of God give utterance, you need to get that done as soon as possible. Because we don't know when your last day or our last days will be. You need to take care of that. If we live in the Lord will, we'll see you Sunday. God bless you in Jesus' name. Now, if you're here this morning, this is not a look around type of a thing, but if you're here this morning and you know 
you haven't received the Holy Ghost yet. And if you believe, see, it's according to your faith. If you believe that God will fill you with his precious Holy Ghost, you will speak in other tongues when that happens. If you haven't had that experience, you need it. You can't see the kingdom without it. You need it. You need it. You need it. You need it. More than you need food and drink. Are you in when you come, come believing. When you 